In an earlier video, we presented general update equations for single object tracking. Since those equations are general, we can of course use them here. Still, we now assume that the predicted density has a specific form, and we will actually re-derive the update equations to show how to express the posterior on the desired form. We first recall the measurement model, ignoring the terms outside the brackets that do not depend on xk. 1 minus pd represents the hypothesis that the object is undetected, whereas the other mk terms represent the mk different hypotheses where one of the measurements is in object detection. We note that the measurement likelihood is a sum with one term for every possible association at time k. The predicted density is instead a sum with one term for every possible sequence of associations up to time k minus 1. As usual, the posterior at time k is proportional to the predicted density times the likelihood function. Since both the predicted density and the likelihood contain a summation, the product contains one term for every pair of terms in the two factors. First, the factors outside the brackets in the likelihood function can be absorbed into the proportionality constant. To express the rest of the product, we take the predicted density times the different terms in the likelihood. For the term 1 minus pd times the predicted density, we obtain the following sum. For the remaining mk terms in the likelihood, we obtain a double sum over the sequence theta 1 to k minus 1 and the association theta k. We now have a large sum with many different terms. However, every term is a product of one term in the likelihood, which corresponds to specific theta k, and one term in the predicted density, which corresponds to sequence of associations up to time k minus 1. That is, every term corresponds to a pair of hypotheses, theta 1 to k minus 1 and theta k. And for every pair, we obtain a new hypothesis, defining the sequence of associations up to time k, here denoted theta 1 to k. It should therefore be possible to view this entire sum as a summation over theta 1 to k. So, the posterior density is proportional to this summation. We would now like to express the posterior as a sum over theta 1 to k of weights times densities. Using tricks from earlier videos, we can express the weights and densities. The unnormalized weight of a single term is generally equal to the integral of the original function whereas the density is proportional to the same function. For the hypothesis where theta k is equal to zero and a specific sequence of associations up to time k minus one, the unnormalized weight is proportional to the integral of the weight times the predicted density for the specific association sequence times one minus pd, where the weight can be factored out from the integral. Similarly, the posterior density given the same sequence of associations is proportional to the predicted density times one minus pd where the weight w theta 1 to k minus 1 is ignored since it is a constant. As you can see, these are essentially the standard expressions when the object is undetected at time k. But the unnormalized weight is now scaled by the weight of theta 1 to k minus 1. So why is this factor included? Well, the weights reflect how reasonable or probable a sequence of associations is. This factor tells us that it is not enough to consider if theta k equals zero is reasonable, but we also need to consider if the earlier parts of the sequence of associations are reasonable. The weights and densities for the hypotheses where theta k is larger than zero are obtained in a similar manner. The unnormalized weight is the integral of this function, whereas the densities for these hypotheses are proportional to the same function. If you look at the densities, you can see that it is the same type of update that we have performed previously, and the only difference is that the predicted density given theta 1 to k minus 1 is used as a prior to the specific update. It's illuminating to describe the update step under the assumptions that the predicted density is Gaussian, the probability of detection is constant, and the object likelihood is linear and Gaussian. With very few adjustments, the equations are identical to the expressions that we have seen previously. Apart from a slight change in notation, the main difference is that the unnormalized weights are scaled by the weight for theta 1 to k minus 1. The posterior density of xk, given theta 1 to k, is identical to the predicted density when theta k states that the object is undetected at time k. If theta k is greater than zero, the posterior density of xk, given theta 1 to k, has mean mu and covariance p. Since we are given the predicted density, it is sufficient to perform a single comma filter update using z theta k as measurement. 
The expressions for the unnormalized weights are similar to before. To compute the predicted likelihood, we need the predicted measurement z bar and the predicted measurement covariance s, and these are computed as part of the same Kalman filter update. As usual, the predicted likelihood is small if z k of theta k is far from the predicted measurement. For completeness, here are the equations for the Kalman filter update that gives you the predicted mean and covariance of the measurements as well as the posterior mean and covariance of the state for a given sequence of data associations. The equations look a bit more complicated due to the super indices theta 1 to k minus 1 and theta 1 to k, but it is really the standard Kalman filter update. Let us visualize the equations to make things more concrete again. The green curves show the predicted density at time 2 and the posterior at time 2. In this case, the predicted density contains three hypotheses since we have two measurements at time 1. Since we only have one measurement at time 2, we have two possible associations at time 2. Either the object was detected or it was undetected. This gives us six possible sequences of associations that we need to consider. And we can visualize how the different sequences contribute to the overall posterior. The most likely hypothesis is that the object was detected at both time instances and that the object measurements are 1.7 at time 1 and 1.3 at time 2. The hypotheses that involve the measurement at minus 1.3 are very unlikely. This is partly due to the prior mean at time 1 being 0.5 and partly because the measurements at minus 1.3 and 1.3 are far apart. More specifically, the predicted likelihood for the measurement at time 2 is very small if we assume that minus 1.3 was the object detection at time 1. We are now ready to wrap up. We have learned about tricks to normalize mixtures of densities and a few other things. Still, our main goal was to present a conceptual solution to recursively compute the posterior at time k. We have seen that the posterior can be decomposed into a summation that contains one term for every possible data association sequence. An important advantage with this is that we can use a simple comma filter to compute the densities and weights if the models are linear and Gaussian. Also, even when the models are not linear and Gaussian, we can often use an extended Kalman filter or some other type of Gaussian filter to approximate the densities and the weights. This is very useful, but since the number of hypotheses grows very quickly, we still need to introduce additional approximations, and that is the upcoming topic.